Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters community, is brought to you by Handy Quilter, designed by a quilter for quilters, and Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years. Hi, and welcome to Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters community. I'm Mary Kate Carpetris, and I'm here today with Quilters Newsletter's creative editor, Lori Baker. Hi, Lori. Hi. And Lori's going to show us today um, strip piecing, which is something that comes up a lot but you are known to be very precise and quick. So we're, show, we're gonna learn your quick and precise ways and easy ways of doing strip piecing today. Yes, we are. <laughs> Good. So this particular block is a perfect place to use strip piecing mm -hmm. because instead of piecing together three little squares, I can make strips and then cut them apart, and it really makes my work go yeah. more quickly. Instead of having to cut, this is what, five by five, 25 squares for each block, you're cutting strips. Yes. Piecing them in together and then putting them back together. Right, so. exactly, exactly. So the first thing we want to do is start our fabric really good. Okay. The second thing we need to do is make sure that our fabric is nice and square. And I can tell that this piece is not exactly square by all the little frayed edges there. If it was square, that'd be one thread. Mm -hmm. And by square, you mean on grain. Because Correct. Because to the eye, this looks square. I mean, right. you're, you're, I'm just going to readjust this. I mean, the, the, the selvage edges are parallel. Right. And you have a nice flat fold up here. And so, so you would think. A lot of people think that's square, and yet those stray threads there along your cut yep. edge tells you you're not perfectly on Not grain. exactly right. So we're going to start by cutting and making this nice and square. And the way I do that, when my fold is nice and straight like this mm -hmm. one is, is I just line up my uh, um, an inch line on the ruler, mm -hmm. both on the top end and the bottom end of the ruler. So so I've got everything nice and straight. And see, and my, now you're eyeballing the thread, the grain of the thread, right, right? Right. And it looks good. And I can see that I'm I'm trimming more from this end than I am from right. this. Right. Get out of your way. Having it on grain like that will really eliminate little bobbles. That's right. When you open up this folded strip, and it'll keep it nice and even. Correct. And then um, keep things from shifting. Right. So you, then now you've got nice straight. Yeah. Beautiful. I could either rotate my mat or I can rotate my fabric mm -hmm. now. So I've got this edge toward me. And then I'm going to pay attention so I'm really lining up right on the edge of the fabric with my ruler. I'm cutting three inch strips for this particular project. Mm -hmm. And do you always cut your strips with the um, ruler on top of the fabric and using the lines on your ruler rather than lining it up with the measurements on your mat? Yeah, and here's the reason why. If you cut on that line enough times on your mat, you're going to kind of make the mat hard to read. Mm. So I cut wherever unless I really need the lines on the mat. Does it add to more precision, more consistency if you're using just the ruler or just the mat or it's more about preserving the mat. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So once I have my strips cut, mm -hmm. it's an easy thing to line them up because they're both three inches wide. Mm -hmm. So I just take a hold of them at the top and just run my hand down and pretty much that lines them up and I'm ready to sew. All right. I don't pin right. when I'm doing strip piecing um, it just seems like it's uh, one of those things that that takes more time because I have to stop and take the pins out. And also because you cut it um, on grain, presumably you cut your strips on grain, so you're not getting stretch. Right. Or you can just kind of lightly make sure those edges are aligned as they approach the presser foot. 
and I can see I can see just a tiny touch of my brown underneath. Mm -hmm. So as long as I can see that, I know that they're lined up. Okay. And I can keep going. See, and there's a nice place to readjust yes. as it goes. It's a good thing uh, when you're strip piecing because we're going to cut this apart in a little while. It's mm -hmm. a good thing to shorten your stitch length. Ah, to what? What do you shorten I usually to? just shorten it one click to two instead of two and a half okay. millimeters. And I don't press at this point. Mm -hmm. I go ahead and sew on the next strip. So. And again, it's a simple matter of, of just lining up that edge. Mm -hmm. A thing that is important to remember is that you want to sew in the opposite direction as of the last strip. Mm -hmm. So I know that when I started this strip, I lined my edges up so they matched. Mm -hmm. So that's an easy way for me to tell that this was the beginning mm -hmm. of st seam line number one. Mm -hmm. So this uneven edge should be the beginning of seam line number two. And the reason for the alternating stitching is? It, it keeps things from twisting. If you keep going in the same way, you might get more distortion. Mm -hmm. This way, if there's a little distortion from the first row of stitching, it'll correct itself in okay. the second row of stitching. So again, I'm just going to stitch that with a quarter inch seam mm -hmm. and add more strips until I've got it five strips wide. Okay. When I've got my, my pieces together, I need to press. And I always press to the dark fabric. And in this particular case, we've got two fabrics that are about the same intensity. Right. Yeah, your, your seam allowance wouldn't shadow through Correct. either of those fabrics. That's regardless. right. So I so. simply made an executive decision and called the brown the dark fabric. So when I get ready to press, I'm going to press to the brown because when we go back into our, our block, we're alternating brown and green, mm -hmm. so they're going to nest together nicely. Now, with this, did you call this blueprint brown for the sake of pressing? For the sake of pressing, And yes. again, because this is a nice, opaque fabric, it's right. not going to show through. Right. So you can do that, but you, it'll depend on the types of fabrics that you're using, and sometimes a seam allowance is just going to shadow through. That's just all there is to That's it. That's right. So. so once I have my five strips of fabric together mm -hmm. and pressed, it's time to cut in strips. I'll let you take the cutting position. And I find that it slips less if I have the right side down and the seam side up because you've got more fabric in contact with the mat. Right, you don't have pivot points Correct. with the seams. Correct. So just line up that three inch mark again. And talk really quickly about your hand placement there. Okay, this is a thing I learned that helps keep the ruler from moving. I have part of my hand on the ruler and I have part of my hand on the mat. I always have at least my pinky, but usually my pinky and, and my ring. And down, finger. not up all right. fingertips. Right, I've, I've got a lot of hand in contact with the ruler so it doesn't slip. It helps you just control it better. Right. Again, fewer pivot points. Exactly. And. When we're cutting, this is not a place to hurry because, again, you're going to get slippage mm -hmm, and things mm -hmm. sliding around. And these are all things that magnified over five strips times five. All of a sudden, you end up with a block that you thought was going to be 12 and a half inches unfinished, and it's 12 and five, you know, 12 and a quarter, or maybe it's too big or something like that. Or and maybe it's 12 and a half on one end and 12 on the other because you've, yeah. So, so the, that cutting is a good place to go slowly mm -hmm. and, and be careful that things are staying precise. Mm -hmm. So then we're ready to sew. Okay. And we're going to sew those strips together. Because we've pressed uh, the seams in opposite directions, it's easy to get them to nest. And I don't pin again. I use my fingers and I just feel and make sure that they're together tightly. Uh, 
I find that when I'm sewing, I use my, my fingers instead of pins a lot. So, so I hold those together and when I get really close and it's important, I actually am holding those two seams uh -huh. down. Do you ever use an, a stiletto or the tip of your scissors or a, a seam ripper or anything like that? No, I like don't. I just use my fingers and, and I'm careful. Mm -hmm. um, I've never sewn myself. I have hit the needle once with, okay. with a fingernail, but it didn't pierce. Okay. <laughs> but the, it, it, it's a good thing to point out that, that when you use your fingers that close to the needle, you need to be paying attention. Yes, you do. Even though there's metal around it, you still be surprised yeah. um, how much things can get in the way. That's, that's right. So because I used my fingers to make those seams nest, I've got nice precise corners mm -hmm. where things are, are mm -hmm. all matching nicely. And again, I like watching you sew these things because you are fast and you have very good control of your machine because you're very experienced, and yet you do slow down when you need to. It's not always That's right. full bore. You can't go pedal to the metal all the time. Mm -hmm. So once you get your five strips sewn together, you have your block, except that when I was making this, this step out, I, I didn't have the finished project in front of me. Mm. So I put the strips together in the wrong order. I see that. I should have two of this strip mm -hmm. and one of this strip. This strip here, right. this is this strip here. Right. right. In order to make this block. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> I'll probably make a pillow or something out of this because I do have the finished project. Right, yes. Uh, yeah, exactly. You knew what you were doing when you made the finished project, but, you know, this is a good uh, you know, example of Checking the pattern when you're yeah, working. Exactly. I want to backtrack a little bit though. With since we have just a lone block sitting in front of us, and you are very good about making a sample block before you embark on making all the blocks right. for a given quilt. Um, how do you handle that when you're strip piecing? So do you 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 piece? Do you check your seam allowances? Do you check? Your, do you measure across your pieced band? Or one of the things is that that I sew on the same machine all the time. So I know what a quarter inch seam mm -hmm. is with that machine. Mm -hmm. So pretty much I know that if I've cut accurately, I've got a quarter inch seam. I don't check each strip. If you're not, if you're a beginning quilter and you haven't done this very often, it'd be a good thing to check your first two bands sewn together and make sure that it was the right size. That's the right width, right. including seam allowances. Right. Because then you have the opportunity to go back and adjust and your seam allowance mm -hmm. if necessary until yes. it's right on because it's, it's time well spent. Absolutely. At the beginning of a project. Because trust me, I've made an Irish chain quilt. I've blogged about it um, even on our blog. And um, it was pretty early on. And yeah, there was some very interesting piecing going on there. <laughs> All so of our first quilts have much, that. <laughs> very much time well spent at the beginning of the That's project right. to check those seam allowances and make sure your band is where you want it because then it'll really accelerate the process right. going forward. And when I do get my first block finished, then I do lay it down and measure it. Okay. And just make sure that everything's the right size and it's good to have the right colors too. But <laughs> this is lovely, but see, I love this alternate layout. I like how I like the pattern emerging from the brown. The brown there. really stands mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. nicely mm -hmm. in this alternate. And the blue piece. really pops there mm -hmm. in the center. So whereas in this quilt, this is a, a version of, a, of an Irish chain, and um, it, it's, it creates its own pattern when you have the blocks with the alternate blocks. And I right. Did, this is another thing I want to talk about with the sample you made with this quilt is what a great opportunity to use a large scale print that you can't yes. bear to cut up into yes. little pieces. You did cut it up into some little pieces, but then you also have these large right. alternate blocks that really allow it to sing and, yes. and, and take center stage. And yeah. then the Irish chain kind of recedes uh -huh. and they become the alternate blocks right. in some way. So it's a, a great um, lesson just in design, really right. simple yeah. quilt design. So fantastic. Thank you so much, Lori. As always, your, your little tips and the little things you do to finesse your projects are always very instructional for me and I hope you. for you as well. Thank you so much for joining us today and we hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.
Quilters Newsletter TV, The Quilters Community, is brought to you by Handy Quilter, designed by a quilter for quilters, and Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years.